Hello guys, this is Sanjay and this is a brand new video in the SEO Mastery course. I know a lot of people have been asking for a video like this as to how to write content for SEO. And I also know that a lot of people have been asking a video on how to create backlinks and how to use them to rank your website. But before we proceed to creating backlinks, it's very important to get your content right and a lot of other factors right which is why I'm making this video first and then the next video will probably be a video about how to create backlinks and what kind of backlinks you can make and how you can use them to rank your website. So let's get started with this video and let's get to writing your first piece of content which has been well optimized for SEO. Before we proceed, let's see what are the things that you should have done by now. The first thing that you need to do is to get your content in place before we proceed to building backlinks which is why i am making this video so that you create all the necessary content that is required before you start building links and after which we will be making a video on how to create this backlink so let's prepare for the content first before we jump into the ocean into building links i am assuming that your keyword research is done there is already a video which has been done from Deepak himself uh, wherein he has gone through keyword research and I feel that a lot of people are already well versed with the idea and concept of keyword research. This is extremely important because if you don't get your keyword research right then most of your SEO efforts will be down the drain. So ensure that your keyword research is done. You can just to like go through the entire process of uh, keyword research you can definitely use adwords to get an idea as to how many searches are happening per month for a particular keyword or for a particular group of keywords i know there has been a few changes in adwords recently wherein adwords does not give you the exact number of searches that is happening per month for any given keyword but um, let me show you a little trick that will help you gauge the amount of traffic that is coming from these particular keywords. Again, this is just to give you an indication. This is not an, the most accurate method of getting the search volume for a keyword, but this is way better than uh, the range that AdWords shows at you. So I'm going to jump into my AdWords and show you how exactly to do this. Great. So now we are in the dashboard of Google AdWords. In fact, we are in the keyword planner part of Google AdWords and there is a keyword that I'm pretty interested in and that keyword is best phones under 15,000. So basically I come here, click on find keywords and type in this keyword and click on get ideas. And this is what Google AdWords has shown me. Now, unfortunately, like before, Google AdWords does not give you the exact number of searches happening for a particular keyword, which is why, and it shows something like this. It shows, it gives you a range. So for this particular keyword, it's 100K to a million. And there are many similar keywords like this. So let's see how you can extract more accurate information uh, from Google AdWords for this particular keyword. So what I'm gonna do is for each keyword, I am going to go to the extreme right corner and click on this arrow. It basically creates a plan for you and I am going to add a few more keywords just to show you how this is done. So I have a few keywords put in this particular ad group as you can see here and it's also showing me daily forecasts and how much it's going to cost me and all of that. This information is not necessary for us. What I am going to do now is I am going to click on review plan and basically enter a default bid of 100 rupees although the bid was somewhere in the range of 4 to 10 rupees i'm going to give it 100 rupees just to stay on the uh, safer side and if you are opting for a keyword which is already 100 rupees i would suggest you to put in a bid here which is way more than the suggested bid by google adwords now if you scroll down a little bit you can see Actually, this is the tab that is by default shown to you. 
So you would want to click on the keyword tab here and just scroll down. So what's going to happen here is for each keyword, it's going to show you the number of clicks it can generate when it is in the first position. So this is a more accurate representation of the number of search searches that happens for a particular keyword or for a group of keywords. So now you have information for every single keyword here, as you can see for uh, so this keyword has about 286, 220, 158, and I have sorted it in descending order, which is pretty great because now you have a clearer idea of how many searches you're getting for a particular keyword. Please keep in mind that this is a daily forecast, as you can see here. So you basically have to multiply this number into 30, which will give you the search volume for a period of a month. Also, please understand that the number of clicks that has been given here is based on the fact that if you are ranked number one for the ad and not for the organic result. So if there is an ad that is being triggered for this particular keyword, then the number of clicks you might be receiving will be much lesser than what is being shown here. So please take that into consideration. Again, like I've mentioned, this is just to give you a much clearer and accurate picture of your keyword research. Don't treat this as the Bible and definitely don't take, think that you're going to receive this much traffic from this particular keyword. Of course, considering it ranking for a lot of other long tail keywords, the number of clicks that you might get will might be much higher or sometimes might be lower also. But this is just to like give you an indication or direction in which you should be going in. So after which you can obviously like download the plan and then like choose the best keyword that you would want to go after. The second keyword tool that you might want to use is something called as Ubersuggest. It's a pretty nice tool. It uh, basically scrapes all the data from Google itself when it suggests its users other keywords that they might want to look for. So if my keyword is best phones under 15,000, it is going to scrape all the possible suggestions that Google is going to throw at me. So let's take a look how this tool works and how it can help you in your keyword research. So I am in Ubersuggest. As you can see, the website is ubersuggest.io. And basically I have put in my keyword here, chosen English slash India, because that is the search engine that we are trying to target for and just hit on suggest. And this is what it has given me. So it has given me a ton of keywords which is absolutely great some of them are like really really nice and tons of long tail keywords also which are based on uh, the year the month dual sim uh, so many other competitors that i can see here which i can probably later on uh, look into their profile and see what kind of keywords they are ranking for uh, also like in terms of city in terms of brand names so tons of keywords here so what i would do is i would download all of these keywords and put them back into the keyword planner that i had shown you earlier and then do the review again and then shortlist a bunch of keywords which will give me a minimum of 100 clicks per month or probably a little lesser than that also would be fine so this is basically a tool which will complement your efforts in keyword research you can also use this tool for other purposes also but nevertheless this is a great tool and i strongly recommend you to use it you can also use a paid service like ahrefs or semrush i personally use ahrefs because i really like that tool i have seen a lot of people recommending semrush also you are absolutely free to go ahead and use either of these tools Ahrefs offers a 14 day or a two week trial with almost all the features in the trial itself. SEMrush also gives a similar kind of trial. If you do a little bit of Googling, you might get a 30 day trial 
window for this particular tool also. I'll just quickly jump into Ahrefs to show how the keyword planner or keyword research tool in Ahrefs looks like and what are the kind of information it gives us which might help us in our keyword research. Okay, now we are inside the dashboard of Ahrefs and in particular we are on the keywords explorer page basically once you log in you can find it on the menu right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to type in my keyword which is best phones under 15000 and i'm going to choose the country and just click on this search icon so Obviously, this looks like a great keyword. As you can see, it gets about 66,000 uh, searches every month. And one of the most amazing features of Ahrefs is uh, basically this, which is the clicks data which they have. So Ahrefs claims that they have access to the click stream data in terms of how many people are clicking on these links and how much traffic they're getting and all of that. And so it actually tells you that if you rank for this particular keyword uh, these are the number of clicks that you're going to get uh, including all the uh, uh, long tail and the secondary kind of uh, keywords associated with this particular keyword so if i rank number one this is the kind of traffic i'll be getting which is i think amazing 87,000 is a lot of traffic and very importantly it also shows you a keyword difficulty level so right now it's at seven so in hrefs language zero to ten is easy and ten to thirty is medium and thirty to seventy is hard and seventy to hundred is super hard basically this keyword difficulty is calculated on a number of factors one of the Main factors is num the number of backlinks you'll be needing. Here it's about, I apparently need backlinks from about eight websites to rank in top 10 for this keyword. So if you scroll down a little bit, uh, you can also find a lot of keywords which are related to this particular keyword. Uh, in fact, it has about 406 keyword ideas which are similar. To the main keyword that i put in if i click on view full report it's going to show everything that i have here and this is like this is really good stuff so there are tons of uh, keywords here which have very good keyword uh, searches uh, per month i am definitely going to take a few of these and like use them as secondary keywords or in fact these keywords are so good they can be primary keywords in the, themselves like for example this can be one content piece and this can be another in itself so can this be so Ahrefs has a great keyword tool it gives you great information about all the keywords if you really want to give it a spin they have a 14 day trial so just head to ahrefs.com and you can get like an all access almost all access uh, free trial for about two weeks which is like a good enough time for you to like play around with it and if you think you can afford the later on monthly subscription uh, you can go ahead or if you want it like on an ad hoc basis you can probably head to a website like fiverr or something like that and pay them five dollars to generate a report that you want so basically that's about ahrefs you can use pretty much as an alternative sem rush also it has very similar features uh, even they have a free trial going on so you can either choose hrefs or sem rush i personally like hrefs because i've been using it for some time now i have certain loyalties with them although sem rush is also a very very good tool for a lot of different purposes next we have a tool called lsi graph which i think has already been covered uh, in one of the lessons in this particular course deepak has gone through this particular tool also which is also a great tool what what is lsi lsi is basically latent semantic indexing what google means to say by this is that it identifies and understands keywords or words which are semantically or thematically the same uh, for example if your keyword is cat 
if there is a word called feline in your particular content google knows that they are basically talking about the same thing so this is what lsi does and to make your seo content a lot more enriching it is strongly suggested that you sprinkle a few lsi keywords uh, i'll just quickly go to lsi graph and find out if i can get some good keywords for my particular uh, primary keyword so i'm on lsigraph.com and i basically put in my keyword which is best phones under 15000 and it has thrown up a uh, quite an extensive list of lsi keywords that i can be using so what i can understand from this particular list is pretty simple uh, i should be using words like good battery backup or best camera or just camera in itself i uh, use a modifier like the year and um, what else uh, use brand names like the Le Leco or the Lenovo or the HTC or Micromax whatever it is so I would be using all of these kind of keywords either uh, completely like this which is the entire LSI keyword which is best smartphone under 15,000 with, with good battery backup if this doesn't fit into the content that i've written naturally then i probably wouldn't mind splitting this up or just using this part of the keyword uh, separately in the piece of content without making it uh, look unnatural so i'm gonna pick a few of these keywords and put it into my keyword list so once you have done this and you must have a list of a rather extensive list of uh, keywords with you what i would do with this particular list is segment them into primary and secondary keywords along with lsi keywords so i'll show you how i have done this you can also use the same format it makes it much more easier for you to either use it while you're writing or give it to your writer and say that these are the kind of keywords that you need to be using and basically it gives a sense of the entire theme of the content that you're going to write so let me just quickly show you the excel sheet that i have created for this particular reason so i have made a simple sheet like this wherein i have segmented all my keywords into primary secondary and lsi keywords so the primary keyword is usually the keyword with the highest number of searches which is followed by keywords which are thematically the same but with much lesser search volume so if you can see here my primary keyword is best phones under 15,000 and my secondary keywords would be best mobile under 15,000 with best camera latest smartphones under 15,000 mobiles under 15,000 so I have tried not to use the same keyword which is best phones but still i'm conveying the same thing by using a best mobile or mobile phones or latest smartphone so while doing this or by doing this what i'm trying to help google understand is that this particular piece of content is talking about phones whether you want to call it phones mobiles mobile phones smartphones whatever it is so this really helps in ranking for a lot of keywords not and not just the primary keyword also i have put in the lsi keyword here and like i mentioned before i'm going to use it uh, as this particular uh, as the complete phrase or i'll break it up into like two different phrases and use it where i see a uh, best fit so i'll be doing this for every primary keyword and then i'll be adding secondary keywords and lsi keywords so then you should have like a pretty big list of uh, keywords which you can write content around so now you have a list of keywords which you have uh, extracted either from adwords uber suggest hrefs sem rush whatever it is so now you have a very extensive list of keywords now let's see what you can do with them so now you have a list of keywords but it is very important for you to know the landscape of the competition that you have and why is this important this is extremely crucial because this way you will know which battle to pick and this can turn out to be either extremely profitable or extremely expensive for you because just because a keyword has a lot of volume doesn't mean that you should just pick it up and try to like rank for that particular keyword a lot of people make that mistake but by doing so you're gonna like burn your hands pretty soon because these are the kind of keywords which are not only very difficult to rank for 
but also the intent might not be the right thing here uh, so which is why i wouldn't bother to rank for such keywords once i have the search volume for the keyword i'm gonna finish the entire basis of my judgment by seeing what is the kind of competition that is there for that particular uh, keyword so what this does is basically there will be keywords for which you can rank for relatively easier compared to other keywords so if i were you i'm going to choose the easy keywords first and write content around it and try to rank for it and attract the initial traffic and then eventually move on to the harder keywords what this will do is this will help strengthen the authority of the domain much faster by helping you give up i mean helping you in getting opportunities for link building and also like you can get like a lot of interlinking done and eventually you can try to rank the much tougher keywords much easily than you would do otherwise so very important to analyze the competition of the keywords before you proceed any further i will show you how to do this there are multiple ways to do this but there is one very crucial information that you should be knowing and by doing so you will know you will have a rather clear idea of the competition so what i've done is i have basically gone to google and typed in best phones under 15000 because this is my primary keyword this is the keyword that i am trying to rank for and i want to know what is the competition for this keyword now the first thing that i'm going to do is i am going to put this in quotes if you notice this particular number drastically reduced from about 4 million to 91500 results so what does this mean so basically what this means is that there are 91500 pages out there which is using the keyword best phones under 15000 in exactly that order basically this represents the competition that is out there if you have to rank your page for this particular keyword with content you will have to beat about 91500 pages out there so it would be wise for you to know how many pages you are competing against before you proceed writing content for it or before you proceed to try and rank for a keyword in the first place this is step one basically by doing so now we know that there are 91500 people uh, pages rather which is out there with this keyword in exactly that same order which i know for a fact that is the work of a seo guy the next step what i'll do is i will use a particular site operator which is in the form of in url colon now as you can see there are 267 urls out there who have done a pretty decent job at seo and have included their keyword in the url also so again this is we are diving deeper into the competition and trying to understand what are we fighting against i'll be doing one more step before we proceed further here i'm gonna use another site operator which is entitled and this shows me that about 1120 pages out there is using this particular keyword in exactly that order in their title too which you can see here in the first result and also like all the way here so i know how many pages out there anywhere in the content is using this particular keyword i know how many pages out there is using this particular keyword in the url how many pages out there is using this keyword in the title what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do this over and over again for a bunch of uh, keywords primarily uh, my primary keywords and then try to pick one of the best keywords out there which i can write content around so if you can see here I have made a list of all the keywords that I can potentially write uh, on my blog which is which will be fictitious, fictitiously around phones and mobile phones. 
So I have made a list of all of these keywords. Basically, it's a variation of our primary keyword. So it's going to be best phones under 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 25,000, and 30,000. I did what I just showed you for every keyword here. And these are the results that I got. And for potential traffic, what I basically did was put all of these keywords in Google AdWords, put it into a ad group and put it in the plan. And once I hit review plan, these are the numbers that I got uh, as daily forecasts. So basically, I multiplied them by 30 to give an idea of uh, what is the kind of traffic I'll be getting for an entire month. Sorry about that. And now I have the same information for every keyword and I've done the same thing for every keyword over and over again. And this will give you a clear idea as to what is the kind of keywords that you should be going after. Now, you would obviously say that you will go after every keyword which is here, which is absolutely correct and which you should be uh, doing further more research if you ask me. But amongst these keywords, what is the best keyword to start writing for? If you take a look of all the data which is present here, our primary keyword turns out to be one of the best keywords to start writing for because uh, although the number of uh, pages in quotes is much higher than the rest of the keywords, the one in the title and in the URL is much much lesser compared to like other keywords out here. And also you have to see with this kind of effort the kind of traffic that I might be getting which is like almost as double as the next best, best thing. So. Ob there is an obvious winner here which is the best phones under 15,000 and I'm going to pick that and I'm going to write content around it. So you need to do this for every keyword that you have to get your clear idea of what keyword to choose while writing content for. Always choose the easier uh, long tailish keywords first and then move upwards towards the head keywords. In fact, if you do it right, you wouldn't even have to like attempt at ranking for head keywords. You will automatically start ranking for it. Okay, great. Now you have a bunch of keywords and you have performed a competitor analysis on all of these keywords and we have picked a winner. Before we actually get into uh, writing content, we need to understand what stage of the buyer need this particular person is who is looking for best phone under 15,000. Why is this important? This will help you in crafting content which will actually solve the user's needs or this will affect your conversions to a large extent and your content will look very boring to put it out there bluntly so there are basically four levels of buying is if you have to simplify it and level one is uh, latent pain and level two is admitted pain level three is vision of a solution level four is active evaluation in level one um, he is not exactly experiencing any pain or he doesn't want to like address the particular problem with any kind of solution it's basically in the back of his mind and he can probably just seek information but he would not act upon it so what is the kind of keyword that might fall under this category a keyword like new phones or new phones 2017 might fall under this particular category he is basically out there looking for information he does not have an intent of purchasing or researching for that matter so this is the kind of head keywords that i was talking about you know so if you have to write content for this kind of keyword what are you trying to get out of it even if you get the user on your website, the intent of the user is not very clear. And this might negatively or sharply affect your conversions and also your earnings. So which is why it is not a good idea to go after these keywords right away. Eventually you will start ranking for it naturally if your content and SEO is good. So I would ignore this particular user who is in this stage level two where he is actually admitting his pain and he knows the problem and is acknowledging the problem and he is looking for a solution and i feel that our winner 
of a keyword which is best phones under 15,000 falls under this particular category. He knows that he wants to buy a phone and he has a budget constraint which is basically a sort of pain for him and he's trying to seek information for all the phones that are within this particular price range. So now when you're writing for this keyword, you need to keep in mind that you can't start writing are you looking for the best phone under 15,000? We have made a list. Now, I mean, imagine if you were the reader and if you come across content like this, you wouldn't be intrigued to find out what the actual phones are. You would rather, rather bounce off the website and try to find this information elsewhere. How do you avoid doing this? Basically, what you should be telling is giving them a viewpoint giving them a perspective telling them what is what are the things that you have done that they should have done but you are doing it for them for example like there are plenty of phones out there right so you have chosen the top 10 best phones under 15,000 for them so tell it to them speak it out to them talk to them so how are you going to start this particular piece of content you can say something like there are about 800 phones in the market which falls under the category of 15,000 but we know what you are going through and which is why we have made a list of the best phones under 15,000. So this is how I would probably start it out as and as you can imagine not only did I drop my keyword in that particular uh, sentence very naturally but I also put a perspective out there for the user. I gave the user the context of the pain that he's going through and also tried to win his trust over by saying that I have done the research for you. You don't have to do it. Just look at this list and go ahead. When it comes to level three, he already has the solution and it probably can be a solution that he found on your particular website, which can be uh, he found a phone, very good phone, which is under 15,000. Let's assume that it's the Moto G. And now he wants to know what kind of a phone Moto G is. So he his keyword would now transform into Moto G reviews. So this is the kind of keyword that falls under level three. He knows the solution, but he wants to do a little more research on this particular thing. Now, as you might have observed, this is an opportunity for you to write more content right and also try to rank for this particular keyword it also gives you an opportunity to interlink to this particular piece of content mind you that you need to do all your keyword research right while you're writing the other piece of content also the same way we did before this and try to make it very seo content rich also but you are basically aiding the user in moving on to the next level in the buyer needs and if you do that you might get a conversion if you have an affiliate website you might actually go out there and buy the phone from your affiliate link or if you have a e-commerce store within your blog itself you might go ahead and buy from that also now level four is is actively evaluating it now so probably like uh, the Xiaomi uh, Redmi flash sale or uh, Moto G4 Amazon these are the kind of keywords that they'll be looking for again um, it's kind of risky to like try and rank for these kind of keywords uh, you would sh you should be assisting them in moving to this particular stage from level 3 ideally uh, but I would actually initially at least try to ignore level four also because he already knows what he's looking for and he wants to buy it he will just like go ahead and probably buy it also this is a great opportunity for you to rank for branded keywords if your site has picked up already so now we have identified the stage of buyer needs the user is in and we have nicely crafted content around it we are actually addressing his pain points we have told him why he should trust us and we have given him enough information for him to take action. What do we do next? Now we actually write your content. Now you have basically a list of primary, secondary and LSI keywords. 
you know what the intent behind that particular search the user has now you have to craft content around this particular need of the users what are some of the things that you need to keep in mind while writing seo content the number one thing is try to aim for at least 1000 words of content. Reason being is in a recent research, they found out that the websites ranking number one for a lot of keywords had on an average 1200 words as content on that particular page. Which goes to say that uh, not only Google likes long format content, even the users like long format content because long format content has enough information for the users to digest upon. So try to aim for at least 1000 words, more the better. If it's a particularly tough keyword to rank for, I would suggest you stretch it to slightly even more if necessary. And especially if you are a new blogger or a new website, it's safer to write heavier content in terms of words. So. It'll help you in like outranking the much more authoritative websites out there. Like discussed before, you also need to work on writing an interesting and short intro. What are you trying to give them in return of their attention? What is the information that they're going to take home after reading your blog? So if you give them a very interesting intro, they're going to stick on and basically continue on reading the particular piece of content that you have written and while you're writing this content make it practically useful when i say practically useful you have to give them information that they can actually take back and act upon i remember in a startup that i was working for it was called thrillophilia we wrote a piece of content which was basically about a road trip from india to thailand and we had written it so in depth that it had practically every information that you could ask for. What I'm trying to say here is a good rule of thumb would be to keep in mind is that don't make the user go back to Google to find secondary information of what you have already provided. Either put it in the same piece of content or link it to another page where the content exists. So make it extremely useful. Uh, give the information that the user is looking for in all in the same page or link it to another page where it exists preferably on your own website like i mentioned keep it as in-depth as possible which gives you room to play around with a lot of things and also make sure that you use head attacks and make it scalable so there are different kind of readers and usually and most of the web readers are scanners they basically scan through the content and rarely actually go through uh, the stuff that is written in the body of the content so it is very useful for you to use header tags in your advantage and make it scannable so if you are giving that enough information in the header tags they might be intrigued enough to check out what is in the body of the text and they will of course continue reading on further when you do this in order for you to support this quest of attracting and retaining the attention of the user try to use as much multimedia as possible multimedia can be anything from images or gifs to videos to infographics to maps it can be anything for that matter use as much multimedia as possible visual reinforcement helps in retaining the attention of the user it also makes your blog look really really nice i think we have discussed enough times in the forum and also in previous lessons how you can like find different kind of multimedia out there for your particular topic or blog you can also format your content in multiple ways, especially if it is, for example, if it is the um, uh, keyword of best phones under 15,000, I would put all the specifications of the uh, phone in a tabular format. I'll basically make a table out of it and put all the content on it. So when you format content like this, it becomes much easier for the user to grasp that information. Very important don't create a wall of text keep your paragraphs very short 
why is this so important because when you it not only becomes extremely difficult to read very importantly on a mobile phone where you, the most of your users will be coming from it looks really really long and to just read one paragraph they might have to like perform two or three different scrolls and it is very strainful for their eyes to read such long paragraphs so ideally keep your paragraphs under three sentences don't go beyond it if it's even one sentence it's fine it kind of uh, adds a nice suspense to each of the sentence that you're going to be writing so keep the paragraphs as short as possible and avoid creating walls of text once you have enough content now you can start interlinking your content this not only helps in the user experience this also helps in your seo because what you're basically doing is passing the juice of the links that you will be building which we'll be discussing in the future videos throughout your website by doing this so keep this in mind internally link your content to help both google and users i know i know i know by now you must be thinking that what is the point of doing so much keyword research and competitive analysis if we didn't even use those keywords in the content that we just wrote the reason why i put this here and not before is because you should ideally be writing content very naturally and addressing the pains and needs of the user rather than trying to think too much about seo now it sounds very counterintuitive but the reason why i'm saying this is when you do this from this perspective it makes your content feel and read out very unnatural and very forced and very robotic we should try and avoid doing this which brings us to the question how to use these keywords then a lot of people might suggest that keep a keyword density which is basically like the number of times you use your keywords for every 100 words at around 2% or something like that but these are the kind of concepts which are absolutely obsolete at this particular moment in terms of google because google is much much smarter these days and like i mentioned uh, thematic keywords and latent semantic indexing all of these things have been really advanced from google so it's just not about the keywords that you are using it's about all the words that are surrounding your keywords which assist google in trying to understand what your topic is about so why do we need to perform keyword research then keyword research is performed basically to understand how many of your users are looking for this particular information and to give an overarching theme to the piece of content that you are writing having said that it is also important to include these keywords in your content and there is no rule of thumb as such to write it so many times or include it so many times but i have made like a guideline of sorts which you can use to write content around the keywords that we have shortlisted again this is not a rule this is basically a guideline that you can use and feel free to change it or experiment it further to see what works for you because ultimately you have to understand that seo is very relative it is relative to the competition and it completely depends on what your competition is doing and you basically have to be better than them but by following this particular recipe uh, for an ideal seo content piece it might give you a fair amount of start in writing seo content so what are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind in terms of the keywords to be used in your content first up ensure that the keyword is placed in the url and avoid using stop words so stop words are basically words like and of the things like that um, why is this necessary basically when you remove all the stop words your urls becomes much shorter and shorter urls are much nicer to look at number one and google definitely prefers shorter urls over longer urls now when you if you remember when we did the in url search operator you saw how many people were using that in the 
uh, URL and obviously you need to be there if you have to be better than them uh, in any sense. So make sure the keyword is in the URL. Also insert the primary keyword in the beginning of the title tag. So keyword proximity is also one of the factors. Uh, I don't know to what extent Google uh, weighs this right now, but it help, definitely helps uh, in a lot of other ways. So try to keep the primary keyword in the beginning of the title tag. Also ensure that you use header tags around your title. Header tags are basically H1 tags and if you're using WordPress, most of the themes out there automatically wrap the title around H1 tags and put it in the body of the content. If your theme does not do it, basically select that piece of content and convert it into a heading, which will basically turn it into a header tag. Also, use your primary keyword once and a secondary keyword once or twice in the subheadings wrapped with H2 tags. This has a couple of benefits. One is that if your keywords are mentioned in the header tags, which has already been once mentioned in the H1 tags, but also when you wrap it around H2 tags and insert a few secondary keywords, uh, it'll give a better signal to Google. Number two is that using header tags or H2 tags is very important and using subheadings is very important because most of the web users are scanners. Basically, they scan the content instead of reading the entire thing. They basically scan through the header subheadings and if they find something interesting, they then read the body of the text. So it is very crucial keeping in mind the users, especially the scanners in mind and then using subheadings very effectively in order to keep their attention. Also, like I had given uh, you an example earlier, how to write an intro. Using the same kind of example, you can drop your primary keyword within 100 words. Add every secondary keyword once throughout the content. In our examples, we had about three secondary keywords and I wouldn't use more than three or five secondary keywords. So I would use every secondary keyword at least uh, once throughout the content. And I'll also toss in a few LSI keywords, probably two or three in the content. So this way I am covering pretty much all the keywords that I have and I have incorporated them into the SEO piece of content that I've written. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind is to use your primary keyword as the image file name and also to use them as the alternate tag. So when you are saving the image on your desktop, just use your keyword as the file name and upload it to WordPress. So that way you will have an option of adding your primary keyword there. Also in the alt tag, make sure you use the primary keyword once. Use your one of the secondary keywords and one of the LSI keywords uh, in the file names and alt tags throughout the content. You can do the, do the same thing for every kind of multimedia that you will be using. Link both internally and externally like I mentioned before. Linking internally helps both for the user as well as Google to basically not only index your other pages but also to pass on the link juice. Linking externally to authoritative sites gives a very positive signal to Google also. So just a fair ideal number, I would keep it around five to seven for every hundred thousand words that I'll be writing. So collectively, internally and externally, there won't be more than five or seven uh, links on the content. So I'm going to repeat this again. This is not a rule. This is basically a guideline for you to get started with. Eventually, you will get to a point where you will be using the keywords very naturally in the content without having to insert it. And when you're inserting it, like the way I've mentioned it, ensure that you insert it very naturally and not make it sound very robotic. Great, now we have a piece of content which has been well optimized for the search engines. Now, what are the next things that you need to do? In conclusion, you need to populate your blog or your website with as many posts as possible. 
like keep writing it uh, keep writing different pieces of content some can be seo related some can be non seo related which is uh, written purely to be shared on social media or social networks um also a good trick would be for you to log into search console and look for more opportunities and ideas for content so there is a tutorial already been done for search console take a look at it and you can figure out how to fetch all the keywords that your website is already targeting this will be especially beneficial when you are ranking for much easier keywords and you are already attracting traffic and when you want to like expand your content and expand your reach for more keywords you can do something like this you can use this particular traffic to funnel them into your other properties it can be getting them to sign up for your newsletter or getting them to like your facebook page or getting them to share your infographic it can be anything for that matter uh, use this traffic that you have generated through the search engines and distribute it to other channels and try to capture them as soon as possible very important maintain consistency in writing blogs google absolutely loves website which are constantly updated and for good reason so not only does it help you in terms of attracting more seo traffic it also helps you reach more and more customers every month so ensure that you maintain consistency in writing chalk out an editorial plan and ensure that you stick to that particular plan one other thing that you should be doing is update the older posts and keep it fresh try to update it every few months so that google knows that whatever content that you have published is fresh and up to date uh, for the keyword that is in example right now i have the opportunity to update it every say 3 to 6 months because there are so many phones coming out in the market so i can always go back to the existing post and remove one particular phone and insert another phone and update it again which will make it look like it's freshly updated content for google and google loves fresh and updated content so that's pretty much it go out there and write your first piece of seo content i hope you like this video i hope this was informational and helpful for you in the next video we will be talking about how to build backlinks using the content that you have already written and how to attract search traffic for the keywords that you are targeting thank you and see you in the next video